is not the video I thought it was going to be. Um, this was going to be was going to be me bending the sides. I'd I'd filmed the intro, um, but I had a couple of problems. <laughs> yeah. Now the first problem you might have been aware of in the previous video. Um, as I was using the bandsaw to cut the, the straight edge on the sides, cutting the two pieces at once, the bandsaw the blade jumped at the end of the cut. Now this is something I wasn't aware at the time. Um, I only saw it in the edit. I was aware that there was a vibration um, because, well there, there was a vibration because there were two pieces of wood that had warped and were separated so the top piece was kind of in mid-air and it was flapping around a little bit so there was definitely a vibration and I just thought that the really hard vibration at the end was was simply that it wasn't um, in the edit I could see clearly that the blade jumped forward um, off the guides ab about a centimeter um, I was quite shocked when I saw it in the edit so uh, when I came back to finish off uh, cutting the sides to width after the sides had settled down and the warping had gone and they were nice and straight again and I was going to cut them one at a time. Um, I opened up the uh, bandsaw to find that the tyre had come off the wheel. Now part of the blame for that could have been the heat when I was previously using it. It was very hot in here so the rubber may have softened a little bit but the, the rubber had um, had degraded, it had perished. Um, it was it had gone hard and it was starting to crack. And this is something that actually happened to the bottom wheel. It was the top wheel that, had, that the tyre had come off. But I'd had a problem with the bottom wheel a while back and the way I fixed that, <laughs> rather than buying new tyres, <laughs> I'd super glued the tyre to the wheel. Um, and because I needed to get things done and I was in a hurry, um, I decided to super glue the tyre on the top wheel but it took three attempts. Uh, I was trying to use as little super glue as possible just putting some little drops, six little drops around the, 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 the rim um, but I had to use more and more super glue because the first couple of attempts failed and it was only on the third attempt that I actually managed to uh, use the bandsaw without the tyre coming off again. So that had got me all a little bit rattled <laughs> and I, it took me I think two hours to get the side cut and by then again it was just way too hot in here. I'd started early um, but by then the sun was coming round and this conservatory was heating up and uh, I gave up. So I came back the following morning um, all, all nice and early again uh, ready to bend the sides. Um, but I had to wait an hour for my uh, bending iron to warm up and I guess it was about 10 o'clock before I'd started and already it was starting to get really quite warm in here and um, I decided to do a practice bend. Um, now I've, I've, I've practiced my bending before, I've, I've verified that I can get around the tight curves um, but I guess I'd never practiced doing the whole side in one go and that does bring its own little challenges. But I used one of the, 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 the strips that I'd cut off the, um, the sort of the wavy side, the underside of the, the side, a strip about that wide. And I set about bending. And I guess I was looking at the thermometer and watching the temperature go up and I was, I was sweating, I was so hot and getting a little bit frustrated. And I'd got round most of the side and I think I'd done the worst of the curves. Um, and then I broke the test piece and I just freaked out. Um, a lot of this I do find quite stressful. There are various steps I do which have got to be done just right and I, I get stressed out about them and of course filming it all as well that just adds to the stress. You've got another thing to think about. You, it's yeah I find it stressful. But to have a breakage like that, if I br break the, um, the main sides, I'm kind of looking at them over there, um, that's a big setback because um, it's unlikely I can come back from a breakage 
Um, possibly I can super glue the sides together, maybe. But it's basically start again. It's basic. I haven't got any more um, thickness walnut. I'd have to go out and purchase some and get it all prepared again. Um, it won't have time to settle down, although I guess thin walnut will acclimatise fairly quickly. Um, but it, yeah, it's not something I really want to contemplate. But worse than that, my confidence in the design was was hit because suddenly the thoughts are going through my mind. Oh my God, are, are the curves actually just too tight? Um, yeah, so I just stopped doing everything at that point. Um, I just freaked out and I just had to just stop and just go away from it and, and come back to it later. So the following day, I felt a little bit better when I saw the brake, and I'll, I'll show it you now. Here's the piece, and the brake's just here. Now, <laughs> the thing you'll notice about the brake is it's not at the peak of the curve. It's in the middle where there is no curve, where the one curve becomes the next curve. And I think the problem with this was that I got the the piece on the iron and I suspect I had my hands way too far apart and was bending like this and this piece here would have been cold where the brake is so where it's hot it will bend it should get floppy you'll usually feel when it's floppy and you can you can then work your way into the bend but back here it is cold and brittle and I suspect what happened um, is that I was pulling like this and this became a weak spot and broke. This iron's cold by the way. Um, so I, I guess the answer is don't do this sort of thing where you can end up breaking it back here. Keep your hands near the work and only put pressure on the bit that you're actually trying to bend. Don't put pressure further back. I think I learned a valuable lesson there. So I decided that I would just do a test bend for this for this video just to get my confidence back. So I used the two much narrower pieces that I took off the, the, the straight edge, the, the front edge of the sides. And that's what you see in this video, although I actually, I actually only filmed the one of them, um, and you'll see that. Um, so, uh, roll VT. I'm going to go and soak this for 10 minutes, and then we'll get going. Right, this is where I'm going to start. This is the bottom of the guitar. <clears throat> and the key thing here is that this is the centre of a curve. And this is the break point, this is where the curve goes the other way. So I want to bend just that part, and you can see now why I've chosen to have extra at the end. Um, you just can't bend right up to the middle of a curve. Um, and I'm just going to mark on here, <coughs> just there. That's the sort of the, the other extreme of the curve, so I'm just going to put a gentle, gentle curve on there to begin with. I'm going to try and work either side of that mark. <coughs> My voice has gone. centered on that mark. Is that enough? A little bit more. Try to keep it moving. But you can't move it too much because it's actually quite a small curve. Okay, let's have a look at that. Yeah, 
that's about right. So now we do the same process the other way round, where this is the centre of the curve and this is the end point. You really do feel the wood go floppy as it uh, as it heats up. This this is actually one of the trickiest curves because it's so close to the previous curve, and uh, I, I know this from previous experience. <laughs> um, I have done another test. And it's very easy to get the curve off centre. I've I've bent it more here than here, and really it needs to be centred on this point. So I'm just going to try and address that. It just seems to be very difficult to make wood change direction. I have no real explanation for that, but that's just the way it seems to go. Thing is not to get impatient and start forcing the wood to bend where it won't. And you'll probably be hearing lots of clanking noises as the side hits the camera. in there for a second. I'm now going to put the curve in around this curve here, up to this point here. I've, I've marked all the break points on the edge of the mould and Although this isn't really a break point, this is where the proper sort of full curve starts. It's, it's almost flat at this point. Um, so that's the part that I've got to work on. Smooth curves are created by just keeping the work moving and just approaching the curve gradually. And don't rush. I've seen people bend using their bare hands with no gloves and I'm <laughs> there's no way I'd ever consider doing that. Although some people do use a a bending strap so there is something between the hands and of course once you've got the full width sides you've got the sides but even so obviously that will go but when it relaxes you've still got a little bit of a bit more bending to do in this area I'd like, if possible, to get the wood to fit the mould without any tension in it, but uh, this will of course be left for a while to let the wood relax. Next curve is centred on here and will continue round to about this point, which this time <coughs> is a break point, but we've got quite an area that's pretty much flat here, so um, yeah. Just need to transfer this over.
before we get to the tricky bit I'm just going to put a little bit of a pre-bend in um, just to lead into that curve and then we'll we'll go for it so I'm just going to put a slight bend along here Clearly this is the trickiest part. The thing with a tight curve like this is not much of the wood is on the iron. It's difficult to get the heat into the iron, into the wood uniformly. And the danger is you're trying to bend cold wood, which is definitely not going to bend. And then holding it against the iron for too long, apart from warming your fingers up a bit, you're in danger of scorching the wood. Pleased with how that's gone though. That will do nicely. So um, I, th I think my design is uh, is is kind of proven um, in that it is possible to bend the wood successfully to the curves of the design and I've, I've learnt a bit in the process. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's come back uh, for the bend proper in a later video, uh, but I am uh, I'm feeling a lot better than I was a day ago. <laughs> Bye!